Hello everyone, this is just going to be a quick video in which we consider the question of the length scale over which it's reasonable to consider that the value of the gravitational field strength of g remains approximately constant. I think this is interesting to consider because in simple mechanics problems we usually just assume that g is a constant, but you may not have a concrete idea of how good an approximation that actually is. So this simple diagram here is just showing a planet with a radius of capital R and a gravitational field strength of g. And I phrase the question on the screen as over what distance does g vary significantly, which is kind of just an equivalent way of asking what I asked at the beginning. Um, but the first thing we're going to have to address before we can actually answer this is what do we mean by significant? Now, of course, there's no universal answer to that, and you might choose to adopt different definitions depending on whatever problem you're working on. But I think a reasonable way to define it um, is that we consider the variation in g to be significant if it changes by some fixed fraction of its value, and I'm calling that fraction epsilon. For example, we might say that um, we're okay for g to vary within, let's say, a percent or even 5% or 10% um, of its value um, before we start having to take into account the variation of g with space. Now we're going to address this by writing down an approximate rate of change of g with distance from the center of the Earth or center of the planet. Now that uh, approximate rate of change we could write as delta g, change in g, divided by um, well, delta r, delta lowercase r, where lowercase r is just the distance, radial distance from the center of the planet, but we're specifically interested in this length scale um, over which uh, g changes significantly, so we may as well call that delta r l to indicate that's the thing that we're looking for. And according to the definition of significance that we've adopted above, we're interested in the case where delta g is a fraction epsilon times g itself. Now this is useful because provided we take epsilon to be small, then epsilon g will also be a small quantity, and this will be a decent approximation to the actual rate of change of g with distance, which is the derivative dg by dr. And then we can of course just rearrange this to get the length scale l, which is what we're interested in. It's going to be epsilon g divided by that derivative dg by dr. I'm also going to put modulus signs um, around this because of course g is actually decreasing with with lowercase r, with distance from the center of the earth, um, but we don't really want that to affect our, uh, our result. We just care about the size of the length scale. Now we know both g and dg by dr because g follows an inverse square law, so we can write down that g is minus gm over r squared, it's standard expression for uh, gravitational field when you've got spherical symmetry, um, and then we just differentiate this to find dg by dr. Um, you're going to pull down a minus 2 because this is uh, r to the minus 2 really, uh, so you're going to get 2gm um, over r cubed for your derivative. So let's plug all of that into our expression for l up at the top there. Um, l is going to be, let's keep our epsilon um, at the front, then we've got the g on top of the fraction, um, let's just write that as gm over r squared, because as we said, we don't really care about the signs. Um, then we've got dg by dr on the bottom, so we're going to take this and flip it upside down, turn it into r cubed over 2gm. Um, and then, well, the gm's cancel, which is nice, and the r squared's cancel, and you're just left with a factor of uh, r on the top, and this all becomes just epsilon r divided by 2. Now remember, this applies at any distance from the center of the Earth. This lowercase r is just an arbitrary distance. Um, let's say we want to consider specifically um, the case at the surface, which is where we usually do our physics experiments. Um, at the surface, we can set that little r equal to capital R, which is the radius. And in the specific case of Earth, let's put some numbers in, radius of Earth is approximately 6,400 kilometers. And let's come up with a value of epsilon that seems reasonable. Uh, I would say maybe if G varies within about a percent of its value, unless you're doing super, super precise experiments, um, then maybe it's reasonable to consider that G is constant over that length scale. So let's take epsilon to be 0 0.01 corresponding to 1%. Um, so then our formula tells us that we just multiply the distance R by epsilon divided by 2, uh, multiplying 6400 by 0 0.01 is just going to give 64, and then 64 divided by 2 is 32, and so our length scale is about 32 kilometers. For reference, that's about four times the height of Mount Everest above sea level, or equivalently about four times the typical altitude of a commercial passenger jet, and that's just for 1% variation in g, and therefore we've kind of justified why it's okay to assume that g is constant on everyday length scales.